was uh, Friday the 13th and uh, I'm kind of superstitious. It was too perfect. And the show was uh, one of the best shows I, I have seen because, uh, because the, uh, Jesse was saying he was happy to be here. Tom, it was honestly one of our, you know, whenever anyone dies, they become a saint. But this was one of the fucking most intense shows. And you are this close to being the best crowd of this fucking tour already. I remember Jesse uh, during the show uh, saying that uh, being with us was uh, better than having a, a good blowjob. They say that the worst blowjob is still amazing. But what does the best blowjob feel like? We're getting pretty close right now, ladies and gentlemen. He was happy. Everybody was happy. And because uh, the devil was starting to play. I thought someone threw some firecrackers and what a stupid fucking thing that would be to do at a super crowded show. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then I saw the, lights the guns on. and stuff, so. We saw people uh, running away and they came and they screamed uh, Allah Akbar uh, for Syria and for Iraq. The house lights girl who, um, who didn't make it, she, for whatever reason, she was scared. She turn the house lights on, which was, couldn't have been a more worse thing to happen right then because it discombobulated everyone ironically or in some cold, dark, evil irony, you know? And then you... I knew exactly what was going on from the fucking first. How's that? If you look at the video, I'm off that stage like that because I've been around guns my whole life mm. and military weapons mm. for many years and I've been firing guns routinely for almost 38 years mm. since I was six. And within two seconds, I smell gunpowder and not, not fucking firecracker mm. gunpowder. There's a unique odor that lead pushes out of a barrel when it expands and a unique fire, it's unique. I could smell the gunpowder, mm. but I couldn't hear anything. It was like a, a bubble of cotton. And uh, I just remember seeing everything in red. We went to the corner and then Boot, our guitar tech, he kept looking around. I was like, Boot, get down. There's, they're fucking shooting. He goes, I know, I know. And he finally said, they're reloading. Run, run. He, he, if he wouldn't he, have said that, I don't know. He had the if presence of mind. Yeah. I don't know if I would have run. I, 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 I couldn't because I was looking through the curtain yeah. and the shit I saw yeah. made me unable to even yeah. move, man, you yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, it was. I don't know. He saved our life on that stage. <laughs> he, did. he did. I, I, I love that dude yeah, so yeah. much. That was probably the best thing I'd ever seen out of humanity at any moment in my life was immediately on the hills of the worst thing I'd ever seen in humanity ever in my life. And I'm very grateful to the good Lord for giving me that right away because, I mean, every moment since those f shots have fired have been the most precarious luck of events that I'm even able to be here. Yeah. Suddenly, I felt like a hammer in my leg, and uh, uh, it was uh, the, the most pain, uh, the, the painful thing I've, I've ever experienced in my life. And actually, uh, I had been shot. The thing that was uh, painful for us and traumatizing, it was that one of them was enjoying that. He, you could tell he was enjoying it? He, wa he had a big smile on his face. Really? I, I just can compare him to a, to a child, a 14-year-old child playing uh, Call of Duty or something like that. They told us, uh, if, you, uh, if you shut your mouth, we don't kill. Where are the Americans? They weren't really saying anything. They I don't, know how, they, I don't know how they were yeah. communicating or whatever, but they weren't saying anything. I don't know, and I don't know where all this witness memory of, of things being said comes from because they weren't talking. They, weren't they were on Xanax and cocaine, that's a fact. All of the shooters yeah. were on heavy doses of, of sedatives and accelerants at the same time. Yeah. 
No, we. I saw. I saw on the papers in France mm. they were not on drugs. I was hoping they were yes. because if they were, I think I could uh, not forgive them. Mm. But it could be an explanation. Here in this case, they were not. Mm. So they knew what they were doing. In front of me, I had a, a guy who was uh, really younger than me, and we had uh, an eye contact mm -hmm. between us. And there were, uh, and by this eye contact, uh, we were trying to say, uh, uh, "It will be okay. Mm -hmm. Don't scream. Be quiet. Listen to them, and it will be okay." And he shot him in the face, right in front of mm -hmm. my eyes. We were already at that point. Yeah. All of us together, yeah. everyone trying to cover each other, which was a good feeling right then and there because it, it felt like we weren't alone, yeah. which was really important. I heard pistol fire distinctly. It sounded just like my Beretta 9mm. It's got a unique doing when it comes off the coil, you know. It's, and that's when I, I was, I was petrified, motionless, and I thought we were dead because yeah. I thought we were surrounded. Yeah. Tuesday's always there on the side of stage. She's my girl, she's my girl, she's my love of my life. Like, the love of my life. And I was reaching out to be grabbing her off around the curtain and she wasn't there. And then everything left my head and all I could think of was, oh God, I, 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 Tuesday. And so I just ran back upstairs and I lost Davy. and I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> That was me, that was my friend and this guy. And I just uh, turned my head to, to see if they were coming and I saw, the, I saw him die. He died right there? He died right there. And the first thing we, ha we s thought it was to take him on us, to protect us. Everybody says it's the animal instinct and it's normal and it's... But it's hard to live and to, to think that you put someone who was still warm on your on you to if they shoot you they won't have you if they want they will have him because whatever is dead so i ran up and the dressing room door was propped open with a chair which is weird mm -hmm. because you know as well as i do we lock our shit when we go on stage mm -hmm. but i could see tuesday wasn't in there and everything was quiet and there was a doorway right behind it that went into a narrow hallway i was in such a hurry i opened up the door and i ran in and i ran in like three steps and the door shut behind me and there was a dude at the other end of the hallway and he was standing guard. He had his back to me and he had a, an FAL is what the gun is. It's a, like an M16, but bigger with no handle at the top. But I'd already come in 10 feet and he had me cold if he turned around. So I was trying to tiptoe back and he saw me out of the corner of his eye. And I remember he turned, I remember the second I saw him, his eyes looked like marbles. Yeah. They seemed like they were moving in slow motion. And, and at this point, I had the taste of copper pennies in my mouth because I was breathing in blood because so much blood had been blown into the air that you're breathing it in and, and, it, it, and people's insides smell weird, you know? And so he turned and when he saw me, I thought, I thought I was dead. I, and you know, your life doesn't flash before your eyes. No. It, it doesn't. It, it's something much more pitiful. I was certain I was going to die, and I was thinking I didn't want to shit myself. I didn't want to shit myself. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you hope you're going to think about something <laughs> noble, but that isn't Profound. the time for nobility. He's holding the gun like this when he turns. He's holding the gun straight up and down like this. Like in, and when he turned and saw me, he went to come at me and the barrel of the gun hit the frame of the door and it startled both of us. His, he was like, oh, you know, like when you hit your head that you're not expecting it. It had that effect and that was the second that I needed. To get in the door. Because I opened the door and his bullets shut the door. We went uh, to the toilet and, and the, there is a, an issue. And we went uh, in, the, in a little street and there we saw men with, uh, with guns. And our first reaction was, please don't kill us. And then we realized it was the police. I looked around and everyone was gone and I was next to a bathroom. I held the door open for a while in case anyone needed to come in. And as they got closer, I closed the door and locked it and hid in the shower. 
So the bomb blew off above my head. I moved under a sink. Someone really kicked the door and it fucking started coming off the hinges. And that's when I was like, I'm in here, are you the police? And they were like, yeah, we're the police. They kicked the door and immediately just went to frisk me. You know, I was like, what the fuck is going on? You know, and they're like, you're, you're safe. Just, we're gonna take you, just look up. Whatever you do, don't look down, we've got you. Why did they say that? Because it's the Cause... most horrible shit you've ever seen in your life. Cause... Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday, she just found an exit. That girl is so tough. She was hiding between two cars, waiting for me. That's my girl. Everyone's life that was lost and everyone's life that wasn't was a, a precarious fraction of a second. Where are you going tonight? I'm going to the show. You're going to the Eagles of Death Metal show here in, yeah. in Paris? Yeah. How do you feel? Terribly frightened. You're scared? Yeah. I'm scared because uh, because I have an irrational part of me who thinks that uh, they will come back and they will finish what they started. Mm. And that this time uh, I'm going to die. It's been a week I, I, uh, I have this nightmare when I, ha I am in the middle of the, of the Olympia and uh, they're shooting me in front of all my friends. <laughs> 